this is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these paper cutout letters using GIMP. So I'm going to go ahead and start up a new document here in GIMP. I'm going to set it at 1280 by 1280 pixels. Go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel a couple of times to zoom out so we can see the entire frame here. And the first thing we want to do is import our paper texture, which I will have linked in the description of the video. So go ahead and download that image from the link and then just click and drag that into GIMP. Or if you want, you could just copy it and paste it as a new layer. And there we have our paper texture. So um, the first thing I'm going to do after that is convert this to grayscale. So I'll go to colors and desaturate. Go ahead and click OK. So now that's purely black and white. And what I'll do next is I'll create a new layer on top of that. So I'm going to click the Create a New Layer button down here. And I'm going to choose Transparency. Go ahead and click uh, OK. And I'm going to set the mode up here. I'm going to set that to Multiply. And for the fill color, I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to change this black fill color up here to a shade of blue. I'm going to use this shade right here. Uh, if you want to type in the HTML notation, it's 8 a C E E seven. Go ahead and click OK, and then go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. So we end up with a, a blue colored uh, paper like that. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create another layer on top of that. So go ahead and create a new layer again using transparency. And I'm going to set the blend mode for this one. I'm going to set the mode to Overlay. And I want to change the foreground color over here back to black. So just go ahead and make that black. The HTML notation is six zeros. Go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to go to the Blend tool. And where it says Mode, I'm going to leave that as Normal. Opacity, 100%. Gradient, Foreground to Background, RGB. We want it looking like this right there with that icon. And once we've done that, we could just click and drag from the top right corner down to the bottom left corner. Actually, you know what? Let me undo that. Control Z to undo. We're going to start at the bottom left corner and go to the top right corner like that. We want it going from light to dark like that. And once we've done that, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the letter that we're going to use here. For this tutorial, I'm just using the letter G. You could type out your words or whatever letter. Or you could even use an image if you want, if you want to use like a logo or something or an icon. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm just going to use a letter. I'm going to grab the text tool. And the font I'm using is Montserrat Ultra Bold. It doesn't matter which font you use. Any font should really work as long as it's like a bold, heavyweight font. You don't want to be using like a thin, like a tiny, like a small, thin font. Uh, use something bold like this, maybe like Impact or, or something like that. So I'm just going to write the letter G. Let me bring down the size of that a little bit. I'm going to grab the Move tool, put this towards the center of the page right here. Or you know what? I can grab the Alignment tool. I could set the relative to, we want to set that to the image, and then click on the letter to select it, and then just center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And what I'm going to do now is let me go back to the Move tool so I can get rid of that alignment selection. I'm going to create a new layer on top of this. Uh, I'm actually, no, I'm not going to create a new layer. I'm going to take this paper texture layer, and I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm going to click on this icon. I'm going to select the paper texture layer, click on this icon right here that says Create a Duplicate of the Layer and Add it to the Image. And I'm going to take that copy and just click and drag it to the very top. And then I'm going to create a copy of this layer right down here, the blue layer that we created. Create a duplicate of that, bring that to the very top. Only now we're going to change the color of this to this reddish shade that we're using for the letter here. So uh, I'm going to change the foreground color to this shade of red slash pink, whatever you want to call it. The HTML notation is FF7581. Go ahead and click OK. Then go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to right click on this text layer, the letter G. I'm going to right click on that and go to Alpha to Selection. And then I'll go back up to this top layer up here, this pink layer, and then I'll go to Select, Invert, and then I'll press Delete on the keyboard. Now, if you're using a Mac, you'll have to go to Edit. Uh, clear. And once we've done that, we can go to, um, we can now click on this paper texture layer down here and press delete again. Again, if you're using a Mac, you know what, let me undo that. Edit, undo. We're going to want to right click this and go to add alpha channel. Make sure you have an alpha channel added to that. 
so it shines it, it shows through to, as transparency then do that again hit delete again use edit clear if you're using a Mac now we'll go to select none and I'm going to take these two layers and I just want to merge them together I'm going to take click on this top layer up here right click it and go to uh, merge down so we end up with that right there and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create um, I'm going to create another overlay actually like we did here previously so I'm going to create a new layer on top of this I'm going to click the button that says create a new layer and add it to the image. Go ahead and click OK. Um, I want to change the foreground back to black. Click OK. We're going to grab the blend tool and we're going to set the overlay of this layer. Uh, we're going to set the, the mode of this layer to overlay. And I'm going to right click on this paper texture copy layer and go to alpha to selection. So we just have the letter selected. And then we'll go back to this top layer we just created. And I'm just going to click and drag to create another overlay where it looks like it's uh, like uh, like a gradient from darker to lighter. Let me just undo that. You could always hit Control Z if you don't like how it came out to undo it. Let me try that again. Something like that right there. Uh, let me try something different. Okay, that right there is what I'm looking for. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'll go to Select None, and the next step is to um, I'm going to create this inner drop shadow right here. So to do that, oops, I'm going to create a new layer on top of everything. So create another layer, use transparency, and we're going to make this layer entirely black. So we'll go to edit, fill with foreground color to make the entire layer black. And what I'll do now is I'll right click on the layer beneath it and go to alpha to selection and then click on the top layer that we just created and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that area. And then go to select none. Again, if you're using Mac, just go to edit clear. And once we've done that, I want to bring the opacity of this down a little bit just so I can see everything beneath it. And then I'm going to grab the Move tool, and I'm just going to click and drag this down into the left like that, this black layer. I'm going to put this right about there. Then I'll bring the opacity back up, and then I'll go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I want to blur this by, I'd say, 50. Go ahead and click OK. And once we've done that, we could set the blend mode of this to, I believe I used grain merge. Yes, grain merge. And then we could right click on the layer beneath it and go to alpha to selection. So again, we're creating a selection from the letter G. Click back on that layer we just created and go to select, invert, and then press delete on the keyboard to get rid of all that. And now we can go to select, none. So one final step would be to create another shadow coming beneath the bottom of the left, the lower left-hand side of the letter over here. So to do that, I'm going to create um, a new layer. Go ahead and create a new layer. Transparency. I'm going to take this new layer and bring it beneath, just above the letter G, the text layer over here. If you want, you could turn off the opacity, turn off the visibility of that, so it's not in the way. It doesn't really matter though. Um, I'm going to right click on the layer above it to create another selection from the letter G. Right click, go to alpha to selection, and then click on the layer just beneath it that we just created and go to edit, fill with foreground color. And that's going to make it black. You can't see it because it's layered beneath everything, but it's going to turn that letter G entirely black. And then we'll go to select, none. And then I'm, I'm going to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And then this one I will make 100. Go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on this. I'm going to hold Control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. And I'm going to grab the Move tool. And just where that shadow is, you just want to click and drag and pull that down to the lower left like that. And let me zoom back in. You can just hold Control and roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out. And then what we want, what we want to do next is set the Blend Mode to Grain Merge. Just like that. And I only want this shadow showing out from the bottom left-hand side of the, of the layer. So I'm going to grab the eraser and get rid of all of the other outlying areas. So I'm going to grab the eraser tool. We're going to choose the softest brush down here, which is uh, number two hardness. And let me just adjust the size of the brush as needed. And then I'm just going to erase out this area of that drop shadow so that it's just going right there. And that should be the final step for our design. So as you can see, we are finished. We have created our paper cutout letter using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, 
Thanks for watching.